Well, uh, is this yet another sham? India has also been talking a lot about the Trump administration putting pressure on Pakistan to act against terror groups in its backyard. And this certainly doesn't appear to be the case uh, any longer. Joining us on the program tonight is Pakistan's former foreign secretary, former high commissioner to India, Mr. Salman Bashir. Uh, also with us is Ambassador K.C. Singh. And we have Mr. Chandan Mitra and Abhishek Singh. We're still staying with us. Uh, Mr. Bashir, to you first. Uh, you know, we, we've seen what the, uh, the, the Pakistan the, the judicial board has said they have said uh, also that unless the government of Pakistan has any other case in which they want to detain Hafiz Said, he's free to go. Do you think that the Pakistani government will find another way to uh, keep him under house arrest? Do you think that they'll do that or that this time it could be different? Well, I cannot uh, prejudge or you know really speculate on that what the government of Pakistan is going to do. I think the government has. Uh, been uh, very much aware uh, of your concerns and uh, the overall concerns uh, regarding this particular issue. And I think they will follow what uh, will be logically uh, sound in terms of the Pakistan judicial procedures. And you think that that would mean that they would find a way to, uh, I mean, in, logically, would that mean that they would find a way to slap another case on him, to find a way to keep him under detention? Well, as I said, I cannot sort of really, I'm not in a position to, to really say uh, what they will or, be, or will not what do. What do you think they should but do? I think they, in Pakistan, you know, uh, we, we need to follow the judicial procedure. So it's the, the legality that is going to matter. And I think uh, the, the law ministry and the, the attorney general or whoever is dealing with it, will have to bear in mind uh, the legal aspects uh, of what can be done or cannot be done. As you know, he was under preventive detention. Uh, that uh, law has certain limitations. So uh, let's see what happens. Well, uh, uh, Ambassador Casey Singh, the point is that even that so-called preventive detention, I mean, ha house arrest sounds like a, uh, you know, a, a luxury, frankly, for a man who's accused uh, of, of heading a, a deadly terrorist organization of killing more than 160 Indians in the 2611 attack. Are you even surprised that this has happened, Ambassador Singh? No, this is not surprising because under this law, this was always bound to be an issue that after three or six months, uh, this will come up for review and sooner or later, uh, he'll have to be let off. Because the problem is that Pakistan has not seriously prosecuted him for the 2611 conspiracy on which they keep pleading there is not, not enough evidence, etc., etc. When the conspiracy having been basically uh, created in Pakistan, most of the evidence is there, which would nail half his side. And then we got David Hadley's evidence. Uh, so there's enough evidence in there. On top of that, he is a UN designated terrorist. So certainly Pakistan should square the circle and really nail him for what he has done and not keep doing preventive detention, which is more to save pressure coming from US or the West and buying time, because then they'll be embarrassed every three months when this happens. Well, uh, Salman Bashir, isn't that an important point that the, uh, that the Pakistani establishment has not been serious about prosecuting Hafiz Said, which is why we're in this situation in the first place. I remember you famously came here. I think it was when you were foreign secretary, when you said that the evidence against Hafiz Said was literature. Those were your words. And that caused such an uproar here in India. No, I didn't quite say that evidence against one or the other was literature. What I said was that there were a lot of documents that were exchanged and it was an ongoing process. Even when I was posted in Delhi, I know how keen our side was, you know, to get this thing moving. And there were commissions who were uh, visiting Mumbai, uh, uh, you know, to, to sort of record the evidence and all that. But somehow that process has sort of stalled uh, for a while now. And I think uh, there is the need uh, to sort of pick up the pieces and then really to proceed accordingly. I think uh, there was a time when all of this was being pursued with great vigor to bring this uh, Mumbai attack to a closure. I think it is in Pakistan's interest to do so. And it is not a question of, of pressures uh, from you know abroad or, or from where, wherever. I uh, am aware of the fact that uh, most of the information and 
of course, the evidence was actually the work of the Pakistani investigation authorities. And of course, this required cooperation, uh, on the other hand, by the Indian uh, uh, administration and legal entities who were involved with this. But, but and it, I think it the was point is, though, that apart from the brief uh, house arrest that Hafiz Saeed faced right after 26-11, nothing really happened after that either. But Chandan Mitra, there are some who also see a link between the fact that you had this court order today, uh, you've had this sort of lack of action against Hafiz Saeed, to the US Congress also deciding uh, just the other day uh, that uh, it will not include action against the LET as a, as a precondition essentially to releasing uh, aid uh, to Pakistan. And it's only linked it to the Haqqani network and not to the LET. This was a report in the dawn the other day. So there are people who are raising their eyebrows about whether the US actually who we think is doing us a big favor by to, uh, supposedly talking tough on Pakistan is actually not doing that. Well, I have no great faith in the U.S. administration, whether it's the Republicans or the Democrats. To every country, uh, self-interest comes first, which is why China, for instance, is backing Pakistan to the hilt because they want to grab Pakistan's resources along the CPEC. So, of course, they will do that. Why do we look at them all the time? We should rely on our own resources and ensure that uh, these people are um, not allowed to do any further mischief. And to expect Pakistan to do anything better than this, than release Hafiz uh, Saeed. In fact, I'm surprised. I thought they would celebrate on the 26th of November by actually doing this as a way of kind of mocking India and rubbing salt on our wounds by doing this. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do something on 26-11 that Hafiz Saeed is actually released and addresses a rally um, which he's been doing um, from time to time and uh, kind of uh, calls for a jihad against India. No, nothing surprising at all. What? And we must depend on our own resources to silence them. But Dr. Singh, just give me a second. I want to ask Ambassador Casey Singh though what he thinks about this this link that people are drawing with, with the sort of U.S. becoming in a sense, shall, you know, a, a little dealer on the terror issue and, and what has happened. Do you see a link? Uh, look, we got very excited over the Tillerson lecture, Secretary of State Tillerson lecture. Before coming to India, he said many nasty things about Pakistan and also President Trump when he announced yeah. his Afghanistan policy. Uh, but with U.S., it's always a question of leveraging how do you get cooperation out of Pakistan? And ultimately, the generals took over and the generals have dealt with Pakistan in the past. They need Pakistan to stabilize Afghanistan and to get Taliban to the negotiating table. And therefore, Haqqani, controlling Haqqanis and controlling the Taliban comes higher in the U.S. priorities than the Indian concerns, though they would be there. It is not that they want to ignore them. Uh, and Pakistan realizes it. So the Pakistani army will position itself in a manner where it satisfies U.S. to some extent, the Kabul government to a certain extent, and yet keeps its, uh, its players in play, including the players against India. Uh, whereas we had hoped that probably Trump is going to be quite different, but ultimately the geopolitics and the reality catches up with Absolutely, it. absolutely. Abhishek Singhvi, go ahead. You know, there are two facets of it. The relatively smaller facet is the domestic politics, the government of India. And I think the lesson and takeaway for the government of India is don't start jumping up in excitement with clapping and self-congratulatory backpats the moment Mr. Trump praises you in a speech or says a good word or says a bad word about Pakistan. When you do that too often as a Modi government, then when this kind of thing happens, people will criticize you. Both are irrelevant. Neither is his, his, his stray comments of congratulation or praise, don't look for them, don't wait for them. The more serious issue is, I think this is the biggest farce, and let's be blunt, uh, Nidhi. You know, I'm used to say that uh, a, a diplomat is one who can tell you to go to hell in a manner in which you start looking forward to the journey. Well, I propose to be not a diplomat, but to be blunt. This is the biggest Nora Kushti, the biggest scam, the biggest farce going on. A and this you have to see a little bit of law here. A, Pakistan has not concluded that trial. They could have got a conviction or be brazen and shameless enough to have got an acquittal. They've done neither. 
B, they gave bail on the main trial early on to this gentleman, if he can be called at all a gentleman. And C, thereafter they let him roam free for years. Whenever there is some international general pressure or general international levels of terrorism grow up or the US directly frowns at them, they put him under a law which law by definition cannot keep him in by more than three months. You know, the law on exactly. preventive detention in India and Pakistan is identical. There is a limit. You can't extend it unless you provide overwhelming reasons. And the reasons are of a different kind. So they know that. They don't take action under the main criminal prosecution. They let him roam free and they do this. This is a subterfuge of the worst order and I think it's laughable. Absolutely. For Pakistan, they don't realize that they have a Frankenstein monster in his backyard in their backyard and once in a while you know when USA frowns can you imagine that in our country a UN proclaimed terrorist or a person with a 10 lakh bounty on his head can give a speech in India gate can it ever happen in a democracy the 10 lakh or bounty, pretending the to be a democracy 10 million dollars which is my question to Salman Bashir ah, sorry Bashir. 10 million 10 yeah. million I mean, obviously, if you're if the if the Pakistani establishment doesn't feel the Indian evidence is enough, there must be something that the Americans have to announce a ten million dollar bounty on Hafiz Said's head. But despite that bounty, he has been able to make anti-India speeches, give TV interviews, roam around freely in Islamabad, in Lahore, everywhere else. He must be having a fantastic time sitting at home and under this so-called preventive detention, which has been a farce as well. Yeah. So, you know, what is it that the Pakistani establishment is not able to find? It's because you don't want to find it. Because it, Hafiz Said continues to be an extension of the Pakistani military establishment. Well, I, I think uh, we have to be a little bit careful uh, when you describe Pakistan or the Pakistani establishment or, uh, you know, make comments like that. Because I think uh, you would best bet, and if I would be a little bit undiplomatic, you allow me to say that uh, if India had hoped to use the U.S. leverage on Pakistan and is getting a sense of a bit of a disappointment on that, and uh, of course this uh, what was said just now about the geopolitics of the region, these are broader issues. These cannot be sort of pinned on to one individual or one particular uh, act of terror that happened in Mumbai. I think the best course for India would have been to work with Pakistan on this and other issues, because we also have quite a long list of issues which involve Indian terrorism in Pakistan that ought to be solved. Well, Mr. Bashir, well, I think the problem all these years has been that the Pakistani government has always seen 2611 not as a as a watershed moment as far as terrorism in India is concerned. It's always seen it as you know just a one terror attack. I remember Hina Rabani Khar is uh, you know saying that let's put the past behind us. It's not possible. There is no justice. And as Abhishek Singh rightly says, this trial has been a farce. It hasn't been completed. You don't. You haven't even acquitted anybody. You haven't found anyone guilty. And I, you know, frankly, I think I think the game is clear for everyone mm -hmm. to see. I, I, I'm out of time on this today, but let's see what actually happens. Whether the Pakistani government uh, pulls something out of its hat and ensures that Hafiz Said stays behind bars, or whether uh, he's 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 going to walk free in, in the next few days. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow.